Hello and welcome to our Beginning Game Maker Studio 2 series for beginners. So far in the first three parts, we have created a sprite or multiple sprites. We have got that sprite moving left and right, and we've added some variables. So global variables and property variables to the player. Today we're going to look at conditional statements and this video should be pretty short because all we're really going to do now is constrain our player to the screen and I'm going to show you a particular way of doing that. There are probably two or three or even more ways of doing this and that's one thing you should realize when you're coding. There's never one way of doing something. so. Don't always just copy things down blindly. Think about what you're doing. Or think about better ways of doing things. If you gave the same problem to 10 different coders, you'd get 10 different answers. So I'm gonna show you a way of constraining the player to the screen, but using conditional statements. Let's look at conditional statements first. So what is a conditional statement? A conditional statement asks a question and then the answer takes you in say one of two or even more than two paths so the question might be a very simple question might be have i had breakfast now if the answer is yes then you may then say well go to work if the answer is no you may then say perhaps cook breakfast so you have two paths off that question in a game you might also say at the end of a level have I reached the end of a level if the answer is yes then transition into the new level if the answer is no then do nothing so if statements are very useful or conditional statements I should say we say we can say if statements or conditional statements the two are synonymous but they are very very useful and you'll find that you're always making decisions in programs that's one of the fundamental things about coding is you're always making decisions and taking the player or the user down a particular path based on the questions they have answered or the, the decisions they have made. So let's see the game so far. If I run it, we should have a moving player. So there he is. We're running the idle animation there when he's not moving. And remember, this is an XY coordinate space. So he is at a particular position right now. If I go left, he moves left, so his X coordinate is decreasing right now. If you think of it in terms of an X, Y coordinate, games become very, very simple. All we're doing is moving objects around an X, Y coordinate space. You do this in maths every day if you're at school. You draw graphs and you put dots everywhere in the X, Y coordinate space. Now, look. He goes off screen now that's no good well in this game it's going to be no good okay so we need to constrain him to the screen so let's do it we want to go into object dino or whatever your player object is called and we are going to look at the step event now remember the step event is our animation event and the purpose of the code in the step event is to update the player state before animating the frame. Remember that this is going to be animated 60 times per second. Quickly go into settings to check that. Click the settings icon here. Game frames per second, 60, which means if I go back to the object dinosaur, which means that this code in the step event is executing 60 times per second. That's a lot of code. 
And you need to get your head around that before you understand what is going on in the game. If you don't understand what the step event is doing, you will have no idea what is going on. So realize that this, this code from line six to line 30, because lines three, four, and five are comments, that is not code. They're just statements in English that tell, that say what we're doing, okay? They could say anything. They could say, um, crazy cat lady or something like that but that doesn't mean anything so they're comments that tell you what's going on now the code from line 6 to line 30 how many lines is that that's about 24 lines so 24 lines is executing every 60th of a second so in one second we have 60 times 24 lines of code executed this these 24 lines executed 64 times which if i quickly do a calculation is about 1440 lines of code executing per second that's a lot of code executing and it's a good job computer processors are extremely fast and can do that and the result is you get an animation going so in this step code let's go through it you you've already got this or something like this you may not have all the comments in here and you may want to put them in firstly i'm going to give us some more space by pressing f12 that gets rid of the the windows at the sides okay i'm just pressing f12 here you can either do that or click this icon here collapse expand dot panels all right gives us a bit of space and then i'm going to make the code a bit bigger a bit pixelated but let's make it this size now let's go through this line by line and when we get to the if statement we will code it and we will test it so line six var left equals keyboard check vk left now var left is a local variable we're using to store the value that is returned from the keyboard check function what does the keyboard check function do? Well, it accepts one parameter, which is the key that is being pressed. So the function is purely there to check or detect whether a key has been pressed. Now, this keyboard check VK left is gonna detect whether you have pressed the left cursor key. Okay, so if you are holding that down, whenever this, this code executes, which remember is executing 60 times a second, so as soon as you press that key, this is going to know uh, you have pressed it. And if it checks, if it detects that you've pressed it, this left is going to equal one. Okay, so left will equal one. The next code, the next line of code executes, keyboard check VK right. You can probably guess what that actually does. That will also equal one if you have the right key pressed. Um, okay, so if you have both keys pressed down, which is a bit silly because you can't move left and right at once, then left will be one and right will be one. And we'll see what will happen at that point. So now remember, variables are storage buckets. So imagine you've got a storage bucket, literally a storage, a container like your lunchbox. And inside that is a bit of paper which has a value on it. Now the storage bucket itself is labeled. One of them is labeled left, one of them is labeled right. And inside it is a bit of paper with a value on it. Now, if you press down on the left key, that, that bit of paper is going to say one. If you, if you don't press down, it's going to say zero. Okay, so it's going to be one or zero. Now, we get to line 15 and we want to, we want to set a value for player direction by using the already worked out right and left variables. variables. Player direction is in purple because it is a variable we have created already, a property variable, 
if you like, created in the create event here and play direction equals zero. Okay, right now, this comment tells us that it could equal one minus one or zero and what these actually mean. And that's just to help us. So in, in the step event, play direction will equal right minus left. Now let's work this out. If we have the left key pressed and not the right key, then left will be one, right will be zero. So play direction will be zero minus one equals minus one. So moving left will be equivalent to minus one, which we've got in the comment up here. Now, if we're moving right, we'll have the right key pressed, not the left key. So left will be zero, right will be one, and player direction will be one minus zero equals one. And in the comment, it says one equals moving right. So that's to tell us what to expect, basically. Now, if we're not moving at all, as in we don't have either left or right pressed and the dinosaur or the player is idling, moving nowhere and left will be zero right will be zero player direction will be zero minus zero equals zero so by the time we get to line 16 which has nothing on it but we've executed line 15 player direction is a number so again player direction is a variable think of a storage bucket with a label player direction on it it has a value inside it the value is going to be zero one or minus one, depending on whether we're moving and which direction we're moving, okay? So the next thing we have to do, because we're moving, we wanna make sure that we're not moving off the screen. So we have to check the X coordinate of the player. Now we know that our room is 1,280 pixels wide, starts at zero, and ends at 1280 and we can check that by getting our windows back going into our room and having a look at our room properties down here and the width 1280 so the first that's going to go from zero like you if you if you hover over your room here and look look at these coordinates it shows you where your cursor is so if I go right to, if I go to the left most coordinate, then X is zero. If I go to the right most coordinate with my mouse, then X is 1,280 is what it should be. Yeah. Okay. So we need a, an if statement. So this is where, this is the crux of the, the whole video, really. This is where um, we intended to get to. We want to say if our player's x coordinate is less than or equal to zero, then set the x coordinate back to zero. So we're going to make sure we can never go below zero like this. If x is less than or equal to zero then now the then condition for an if statement is always inside squiggly brackets because the comparison or the question you're asking is x less than or equal to zero is either going to be true or it's going to be false if it's true we go inside the squiggly brackets if it's false then we go, we miss everything inside the if and we, we bypass it and we carry on line 20 and below. Remember these lines execute one by one. Okay, so we're saying, do we want to go inside to line 18 or not? Well, if x is less than or equal to zero, we want to reset the x coordinate to zero. So that means he'll never be able to go below zero. So if you're moving it, he's moving, suddenly gets to minus one, then X is less than 
or equal to zero. Minus one is less than or equal to zero. So therefore, it goes inside the if statement and we reset x to zero. Okay, so there's no way he can get below zero. And just to prove that, we'll run it again. And we'll move to the left to see what happens. Then we'll change the code. So it might help us understand a bit more. So that's, that's an interesting one. It's kind of working, but can you see the problem? Now, if you can work out the problem, then go and fix it without me telling you how to fix it right now. If you can't see the problem, obviously I can't move off the screen completely, but I can move kind of off the screen. So we have an issue and we need to fix it. Now, the issue is, if you haven't already worked it out, every sprite has a center and that center is, is what the X coordinate of the player is based on. So if we look at the idle sprite or the move sprite, in fact, any of these sprites, we will see middle center is the origin. So actually origin is the word I was looking for. Every sprite has an origin and that is your X coordinate because obviously this is 32, 64 by 64 pixels but x, y is just one pixel, it's one coordinate. So that coordinate is, in this case, middle center. We could have made it top left, top center, top right, but middle center is usually a good indicator. Now that means because it's middle center and this is 64 by 64, then we have 32 pixels to the left and 32 pixels to the right. And if we say, if x is less than or equal to zero, then it means if this middle center pixel is less than or equal to zero. Now, if this is on zero right here, then half of this dinosaur is gonna be missing, which is exactly what we saw. So what do we need instead? Well, I think we need this less than or equal to 32 which means that x is 32 and we have that those 32 pixels to the left just showed showing so and then we have to say if it's less than or equal to 32 then reset it back to 32 which means if we run it again test it there we go. X is now 32. That middle center pixel about there is, is at 32 in the X direction. And if we try and move it left, it's always going to reset it back to 32, which is perfect. So now how would you then fix the right hand side so he can't go off to the right? Well, in order to fix that, we just either need another if statement or we could do an else statement. So we could say else, which basically means else if, sorry, like that, else if x is greater than or equal to 1280 but it's that minus 32 again which will be 48 then x equals 1248 now we don't necessarily need an else here I think we could just put another if statement which kind of simplifies it because we're not saying we don't want to say if x is this or it's this or it's this or it's this all you want to do is test the two conditions, whether it's at the left side or whether it's at the right side. So we can do it like this. Now, if we run it now,
and test the right hand side if that works too. And that's basically it. We have two if statements. I might show you the flow chart for that, which could be a slightly modified flow chart from the task that you had if you are doing this course with us. But this is actually a simpler way of doing it. Now I'm going to show you an even simpler way of doing this. Now if you only have one line inside the squiggly brackets you can get rid of the squiggly brackets and do this. like that and then you can even put it all in put the if statement on one line in that case like that so when we read these two lines we say if x is less than or equal to 32 then x equals 32 if x is greater than or equal to 1248 then x equals 1248 and that way we prevent the player from going off screen left or right and that is your if statement if you look underneath we've also got another if statement here and I might just go through this again just for completeness although we've finished the main content for this particular video once we've checked whether we're at the extremities left and right we then check whether we're moving so if we are moving then we set so if we are moving means if player direction is different to zero exclamation mark equals means is different to or not equal to as opposed to equal to which would be equals equals like this so we want to say if the player direction is not zero which means it must be one or minus one hence we're moving hence the comment we are moving if we're moving we want to do three things we want to flip the direction into the, the right direction so image x scale flips the direction to either minus one or one minus one will flip it left one keeps it right sprite we want to change the sprite index to move because he's moving and we want to update the x coordinate which will basically be the direction multiplied by the x speed so x speed is 5 we know that because we created x speed in the create event here and we set it to 5 so that's our general speed obviously if you upped it it would go faster and player direction is going to be 1 or minus one so one times five is five so x is x plus five so that means x is going to be five more in towards five more which means towards the the right direction or if player direction is minus one minus one times five is minus five then x equals x plus minus five which is basically x equals x minus 5. So the player is going to be minus 5, which means more towards the left. Okay, so we're moving x left or right in this line of code. So that's the first if condition, if player direction is not 0, i.e. if it's moving. Else, that means it must be moving. If it, if it isn't 0, it must be 1 or minus 1. So in the case of it moving, all we need to do is, in the case of it sorry, not moving, all we need to do is set the sprite index to idle. That's all. If we don't set the sprite index to idle, then we start moving, then we stop moving by taking our finger off the key, and if we're not moving and we don't set the sprite back, then it'll keep it'll keep moving well this the sprite move will persist and it'll look like it's moving so let, let's actually get rid of this line here I'll show you what I mean
So we're idling. If I move, take my finger off, he's still moving. Which is no good. Let's put the sign back again. So when we're not moving, set the sprite index back to idle. And that's if statements, and that's where we are right now. In the next episode, we will probably start messing with backgrounds and layered backgrounds. So we have parallax movement. So it looks like 3D movement. And we will also utilize the camera. So we're actually following the player because the backgrounds are going to be quite wide, wider than the actual game screen. We'll see you then.